Hello brothers and sisters in Christ, let us dive into the word. Today is the feast of St. James the Apostle, so I wish each and every one of you a blessed feast of St. James the Apostle. The theme for today's sharing is humility, the key to servant leadership. And you know, we see a mark of humility in the brothers James and John, in their willingness to be rebuked by Jesus. In today's gospel text, we see the mothers of the sons of Zebedee approached Jesus with her sons and did him homage, wishing to ask him for something. He said to her, What do you wish? She answered him, Command that these two sons of mine sit one at your right hand and the other at your left in your kingdom. And here comes the rebuke. Jesus said in reply, You do not know what you are asking. Can you drink the chalice that I am going to drink? They said to him, We can. Then Jesus replied, My chalice you will indeed drink, but to sit at my right and at my left, this is not mine to give, but it is for those whom it has been prepared by my Father. You know, Jesus rebuked them. But St. James and St. John were able to take this rebuke. Just like in Luke chapter 9, 54, we see, you know, after (laughs) an interesting account as well, you know, a Samaritan village refuses to receive Jesus. You know, this account from Luke chapter 9, verses 51 through 56. You know, and I read, When the days drew near for him to be taken up, he set his face to go to Jerusalem, and he sent messages ahead of him. On their way, they entered a village of the Samaritans to make ready for him. But, 53, verse 53 says, But they did not receive him because his face was set toward Jerusalem. 54. When his disciples James and John saw it, they said, Lord, do you want us to command fire to come down from heaven and consume them? But Jesus turned and rebuked them. Then they went on to another village. James and John wanted to call down fire to consume those who opposed Jesus. Jesus rebuked them and they continued to walk with Jesus. James and John wanted this assurance that they will be sitting on the right and left of Jesus. Jesus rebuked them and they continued to walk with Jesus. The mark of humility, one of the many marks of humility, (laughs) is the willingness to be rebuked. And Jesus affirms this when he goes on, you know, and the gospel text of today says, you know, when it comes to the other ten, (laughs) when the ten heard this, they became indignant at the two brothers. They became indignant at two brothers for having this desire for glory, for power. But Jesus summoned them and said, You know the rulers of the Gentiles lord it over them, and the great ones make their authority over them felt. But it shall not be so among you. Rather, whoever wishes to be great among you shall be your servant. Whoever wishes to be first among you shall be your slave. Just so the Son of Man did not come to be served, but to serve and to give his life as a ransom for many. There's two things Jesus is doing here. Number one, he is saying, it is okay, James and John made this request through their mother to sit on the right and left of Jesus. It is okay because they were willing to be rebuked. After the rebuke, they were willing to continue walking with Jesus as his faithful apostles. Just like after the rebuke, when they wanted to call down fire, they continued to walk with Jesus. And the other thing Jesus is pointing out here is the inner desire of the other ten who even though they did not ask for a place of glory and honor, they desired it to some extent in their heart. Because at this point, they probably do not understand just yet the kingdom, the type or the nature of the kingdom that Jesus came to establish. So humility is the key to servant leadership, which Jesus says here, you know, you are called to be a servant. Whoever wishes to be among first among you shall be your slave. And we imitate the Son of Man who did not come to be served, but to serve and to give his life as a ransom for many. Humility is the key to servant leadership. And a mark of humility is the willingness to be rebuked. It's also the willingness to be persecuted, the willingness to be afflicted. Which brings us back to the first reading today. St. Paul in his letter to Corinthians says this, Brothers and sisters, behold this treasure in earthen vessels, that the surpassing power may be of God and not from us. We are afflicted in every way, but not constrained. (laughs) Perplexed, but not driven to despair. Persecuted, but not abandoned. Struck down, but not destroyed. How is it that they were afflicted, but not constrained? Perplexed, but not driven to despair. 
persecuted but not abandoned, struck down but not destroyed. It was a sense of humility within them. This recognition that whether I am rebuked, perplexed, afflicted, persecuted, struck down, it is all within the safe confines of my relationship with Jesus. The blessed assurance that amidst the rebuke, amidst the persecution, amidst the perplexity, the affliction being struck down, the blessed assurance that Jesus is mine, that Jesus is seeing to it all, that he is Jehovah Jireh, God my provider. He will provide a way for me out of this. And St. Paul says this perfectly. You know, he goes on to say, always caring about in the body the dying of Jesus, so that the life of Jesus may be manifested in our body. For we who live are constantly being given up to death for the sake of Jesus, so that the life of Jesus may be manifested in our mortal flesh, so that is at work in us, but life in Since then, we have the same spirit of faith. According to what is written, I believe, therefore I hope. We too believe and therefore we speak. And here's the key part. Knowing that the one who raised the Lord Jesus will also raise us with Jesus and place us with you in his presence. In humility, we submit to rebukes, afflictions, perplexities, persecutions, and being struck down. We submit to any suffering. We submit to the death on the cross. We unite ourselves to the sufferings and the death of Jesus so that in the same way we may be united with him in the glory of his resurrection. The blessed assurance that we endure during these sufferings so that we can have the glory of the Lord's resurrection is what kept the disciples going amidst all that they were facing. And at the center of this was as mentioned at the start, humility is the key to servant leadership. I would like to further elaborate on this. Humility, the key to servant leadership, is a realization that God desires the salvation of all souls. You know, in Luke chapter 9, verse 54, St. James and John, when they sensed they were persecuted by the Samaritan town, they wanted, to con- they wanted to call on fire to consume these people. But Jesus said, that is not the way, for I desire the salvation of even these people's souls. I desire the salvation of even these people's souls. When St. Paul says, afflicted, perplexed, persecuted, struck down, you know, for all the people that afflicted him, perplexed him, persecuted him, and struck him down, the Lord desired the salvation of all these people. And that is what ultimately, as a servant leader, kept St. Paul going. That he prayed ardently with all his heart, with soul, his mind and his strength for the salvation of these souls, for the salvation of his enemies, for the salvation of his persecutors, for his afflictors, for those who rebuked him. He desired the salvation of all these souls. The question here is this now. If humility is indeed the center of our lives, if humility is indeed the key to servant leadership, are we humble enough to realize that Jesus desires the salvation of those that we like the least? Jesus desires the salvation of those that we do not like, the salvation of those that we even hate, the salvation of those that are our enemies, (laughs) the salvation of those who put us down, the salvation of those who always think negatively of us. Can we crush our ego and in humility submit to the reality at the request of Jesus to pray for the salvation of these souls and to cooperate with Jesus to become instruments for the salvation of those that we like the least? To cooperate with the work of God, Jesus Christ. It's hard. <laughs> it's hard to do this. But the Lord says, you know, narrow and hard is the path that leads to life. Wide and easy is the path that leads to destruction and death. We are called to be humble. We are called to be servant leaders who serve not only those that we like, but also serve those who afflict, persecute, strike us down, cause us to be perplexed. We serve all of them for the greater glory of Jesus 
for the deepest desire of our Lord's heart, the salvation of all these souls. Let us pray today, you know, the litany of humility, that we may be able to rise above, crush our ego, to serve, to be servant leaders, to even those that we do not like, to those that are away from Christ, to those who don't even know Christ, to those lapsed Catholics, to anyone in our circle, whether we like them or we do not like them, whether they persecute us, afflict us, let us crush our ego and serve them. Let us bring them back to Jesus. We will pray the litany of humility today. A beautiful litany written, as some accounts tell us, Cardinal Mary del Well Zulueta. <laughs> O Jesus, meek and humble of heart, hear me. O Jesus, meek and humble of heart, hear me. O Jesus, meek and humble of heart, hear me. From the desire of being esteemed, deliver me, Jesus. From the desire of being loved, deliver me, Jesus. From the desire of being extolled, deliver me, Jesus. From the desire of being honored, deliver me, Jesus. From the desire of being praised, Deliver me, Jesus, from the desire of being preferred to others, like the brothers James and John today, wanting to sit on the left and the right of yours, Lord. Deliver me, Jesus, from the desire of being consulted, whether it's in the context of our family, in the context of ministry, the desire of being consulted. Deliver me, Jesus, from the desire of being approved. Deliver me, Jesus. From the fear of being humiliated, deliver me, Jesus. From the fear of being despised, deliver me, Jesus. From the fear of suffering rebukes, just like you rebuked James and John and the mother. From the fear of suffering's mutual rebukes, Lord, deliver me, Jesus. From the fear of being calumniated, deliver me, Jesus. From the fear of being forgotten, deliver me, Jesus. From the fear of being ridiculed, deliver me, Jesus. From the fear of being wronged, deliver me, Jesus. From the fear of being suspected, deliver me, Jesus. That others may be loved more than I, Jesus, grant me the grace to desire it. That others may be esteemed more than I, Jesus, grant me the grace to desire it. That in the opinion of the world, others may increase and I may decrease, Jesus, grant me the grace to desire it. That others may be chosen and I set aside. Jesus, grant me the grace to desire it. That others may be praised and I unnoticed. Jesus, grant me the grace to desire it. That others may be preferred to me in everything. Jesus, grant me the grace to desire it. That others may become holier than I. Provided, O Lord, that I should become as holy as I should. Jesus, grant me the grace to desire it. Jesus, grant me the grace to be a true servant leader, Lord. To be a true humble servant leader, Lord, who seeks, Lord, to save souls for you, Jesus. Who searches, Lord, for souls to bring back to you, Lord. Grant me the grace, O oh Lord God, to love those that I like the least. To love and to serve those who persecute me, who afflict me, who strike me down, and who cause me to be perplexed, who even rebuke me, Lord. Grant me the grace to love and to serve even them, and especially them, Lord. I need all the graces, Lord, to serve these people compared to those that I hold dear in my heart, Lord, that I like, that I'm fond of, Lord. I need graces, especially, Lord, to love and to serve these people, Lord, that I like the least. Lord, grant me the grace to do this, to win more souls for you, to raise more missionary disciples, that strive unto sainthood, just as St. James became a saint for you, Jesus. Let us become a generation of saints. St. James, pray for us. In the name of Father, Son, Holy Spirit. Amen. God bless.